talking about prayer, and we've what's the most important reason that we've been talking about that we need to pray, first of all, before we get into my lesson? To know God, right? We want to fellowship with him. We want to talk to him because we need to know him, right? My lesson is called Prevailing Prayer, and it's going to be a little bit the same, but it's going to be a little bit different, too, about um, maybe like the reasons and things we can do in prayer. Um, who knows what it means to prevail? Brooke, what does it mean to prevail? To overcome or to get through. Um, you can almost think of it like winning or um, reaching a goal or something. Uh, the first thing I'm going to read is in Philippians 4 and verse 6. And that's in the New Testament. It's towards the end. I'll give you a second to get there. Looks like everybody's just maybe writing them down now. <laughs> okay. Philippians 4 verse 6. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So, we first were talking about, we were praying th for the most important reason, just to know God, to fellowship with Him, and um, to let Him know our feelings and our thoughts, and to get to know His feelings and thoughts. There's another reason why we can pray, and... Um, this is really important, and it's to learn to trust God and to rely on God. What, what does it mean to trust God or to rely on Him or to trust anybody? If you trust your parents, what are you, what are you doing? Kevin, do what? You believe in them. That's a, that's a great answer. You believe in them. You know that they're going to provide food for you or they're going to provide a house for you to live in or just the things that you need, Right? So, um, we can do the same thing with God, and even more importantly, God should be our main, I don't know what to call it, he should be the main person that we trust, even more than our parents, even more than our best friends, even more than our pastor, our teachers, we should be able to trust God, right, for all things, because God owns everything, right? There's nothing that God doesn't own, and there's nothing that God can't do, so if we can trust our parents to provide food and shelter for us, we can most certainly trust God for the same things and even more, right? Um, go, look on down in that same place, uh, but verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What are God's riches? How rich is God in all things? He owns the whole world, right? He has everything. So why would we have to look anywhere else for anything that we need on this earth, whether it be... Maybe we're trying to do a work for God at school. Maybe we don't have the courage to speak to some of our friends because we're afraid of what they might think of us. We can trust God because he owns all courage, right? He, has, he owns the whole world. So uh, maybe we need to trust him for food or for shelter. Um, just anything in your life that you're struggling with, maybe you need something, God's the person we go to, right? Because he owns everything. He owns way more than your parents do, and we trust our parents a lot, right? I mean, if it wasn't for our parents, we wouldn't have food, we wouldn't have anything. Um, just, you know, while we're kids. But more than that, God gave your parents what they have to provide for you. So we've got to tr learn to trust in him. So that's just kind of an introduction to what we're going to talk about, prevailing prayer. Prayer, trying to reach God, um, maybe for the things that we need to, to get to a point where we can trust God for all things, right? So, let's look in James chapter 5. James is going to be to your right a few books. Verse 16. It's almost at the very end. Chapter 5 of James and verse 16. So, when we're praying for these things, um, and just like I said, this isn't the reason we pray. We don't just go to God asking for stuff all the time but when it comes to working for the Lord or serving the Lord or telling your friends about him or whatever the Lord has you doing you need him right you can't go out there and do it on your own like right now I can't expect you guys to come to know the Lord better if it's just me up here talking I need the Lord to be here so um, in James chapter 5 verse 16 we're going to read how prayer works with um, 
having the Lord guide you and the Lord give you the things you need to work for him. Um, chapter 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Who knows what it means to be fervent in something? Anybody? Anybody in the back? Tyler Dunn. Exactly. To be persistent, to keep pressing forward. I know Tyler and Ruth have both talked about this. To just keep asking, to keep talking to God about these things. If it's courage just to speak to your friends at school, if you find that every day you go in and you feel like you've just been beat down, when you try to talk to your friends, you get scared or you get nervous, guess what? If we will persistently pray and ask God, Lord, I need you to give me the courage, to give me what to speak, maybe to help me learn greater how to use the word of God to help others, if we'll continuously ask him for those things and be persistent, it says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What do we say? We were talking about prevailing, but if it availeth much, that basically, it does a lot. It means a lot to do that to God. It can, it can be the reason that you get those things that you need from God to be able to work for him in the end. Um, who's ever played tug of war? Probably everybody. Okay, let's imagine we got two equal teams. Maybe we got Derek and Daniel up here. We're going to imagine that they're equally strong, okay? And they're playing tug of war. If they're if they're playing tug of war and they're fighting back and forth, and we're seeing that they're equal teams, they're they've been up here for like an hour here playing tug of war. Which one is going to win? If they're both equally strong, how, who's going to win? The more persistent one. I like that. You guys are doing good. Um, I mean, obviously, if they're both equally strong, they either one can win, right? But the one that's going to give the most, the one that's going to keep trying and keep pressing and keep pulling, I guess in this case, that's going to be the winner, right? That's the same with us when we pray. If we will keep praying and keep pressing into the Lord, when I say pressing, I just mean just keep going. Whatever the Lord's having you to do, if it's talk to your friends, if it's just pray for your friends or read your Bible, if you'll just keep doing those things, I promise you it's not going to go unnoticed by God and it, you're not going to just find yourself getting nowhere. God is going to reward you for diligently seeking him. The Bible tells us that, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The next verse we're going to look at is Luke chapter 18. And that's to your left. Quiet. Quite a ways, but it's still in the New Testament. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. You all already read this, so it's probably already written down, but we're going to talk about it again for a second. Who remembers the story that Ruth told about the judge and uh, the woman who kept coming to the judge? Who remembers? Um... Who can kind of sum up what that story was? Who wants to tell me so we, we won't have to read it all again? What happened? 